4.3 number 10. Um, here we're going to solve a system of equations again, but before we do that I want to talk briefly about how many number of solutions we can expect to get from a system. So we really have three possibilities. The first is that we have two lines that cross somewhere. Two lines with different slopes, but they're not parallel lines and they're also not right on top of each other. So they just have some different slopes. Now these two are going to intersect in exactly one place, so we're going to get one solution. And that's from lines with different slopes. We can also have lines with the exact same slope in two different situations. And they're going to give us two different answers or solutions. Okay, the first is if we have two parallel lines. So they have equal slopes, but the lines are not touching each other. They never touch, so they don't intersect, which means we get no solution. So we get zero solutions from that. The other possibility is that we have one line with some slope, whatever it is, and then right on top of it, we have another line. But it has the same equation, so two lines sitting right on top of each other are intersecting everywhere. So there are an infinite number of solutions. It's a lot easier to see these solutions by graphing, which we did in section 4.1. What we want to do now is see how the elimination method is going to let us know when we have one of these three solutions. Uh, the first kind of solution where we have one solution, we've already done those. It's when you use the elimination method and you get an answer, an XY ordered pair. Now let's see what happens with the next two problems. How do we see from the algebra that we have no solutions or an infinite number? So number 10. X plus Y equals 5 and X plus Y equals 10. We want to get either the X or the Y terms to cancel out. So let's just shoot for the X's. If we multiply the top one by minus 1, minus X and plus X will cancel. So let's go ahead and do that. And just multiply the bottom by 1, keep it the same, minus x, and then remember the minus 1 hits everybody. Every term gets multiplied by minus 1. So we get minus x minus y equals minus 5, and the bottom one stays the same. And then we add them up. x terms are gone, and in this case, the y terms are gone also. And we end up with 0 on the left. So the left side doesn't just go away we get a zero, which is a real number. We want to keep it there. We get zero equals five. Well, zero equals five is impossible. Or false. Think of it either way. No matter which way you think of it, it means there is no solution to this problem. So if you come up with a false answer after you do the elimination method, or a false statement, the final answer is no solution for the system. And let's take a look at another problem that will give us the other situation. 4.3 number 11, solved by the elimination method, and what is the nature of the solution? So we want to get either x or y to cancel, and if we do times minus 2, on the top, we will get minus 10 and plus 10 for the x's, and they'll cancel out. So let's go ahead and do that, times minus 2, and keep this one the same, so times 1, and we get minus 10x minus 12y equals negative 2, and the bottom is 10x plus 12y equals 2. And let's see what happens. These cancel out, 0. Those cancel out. Zero, so the left side is entirely zero, equals, and those cancel out, zero. This is a true store, um, statement, always true. If you get a statement that's always true, conclusion will be we have an infinite number of solutions because it means that we have two lines laying right on top of each other. Infinite number of solutions.